AC pressures. They're normal on this one. See that? Perfectly normal pressure. Right now. Right now it's normal. It's an 08 Nissan Altima. Let me shut this thing off real quick. And the customer's complaint is, every once in a while, the AC stops blowing cold. Okay. I did verify it. And unfortunately, it's not doing it now for me to show you on the gauges. But what happens is, all of a sudden, like, the, the pressures were staying perfect. This thing will actually blow 39 degrees inside the car. And all of a sudden, it'll start cycling like mad. And I noticed when it cycled like mad, all of a sudden, the engine, you could see when the compressor kicked on, the engine loaded hard. Like it got an extreme surge on it or, or, or a lot of tension on the motor itself. Like it needed a lot of power to run. So I hooked gauges up to it and I watched. And what happened was while it was doing that, high pressure would pin. It would just about pin every time the compressor kicked on. Shut it down, let it sit for a while. Now it's working fine again. Okay, well when it was doing that and it was pinning, you know, obviously with the compressor not running, the AC wasn't cold. So what causes that? Well, there's a regulating device in there. On this one, it's an expansion valve. Never done one on one of these, so I'm about to learn. From what I understand, it's supposed to be under the cowl area. So i got to take the wipers off, the cowl off, um, all of that. But what I'm going to do is I'm recovering the AC now. That's actually what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to recover it uh, just so I can see what's in there. And plus, this way I can verify the charge that's in there. But I'm going to do all of that first, and then I'm going to replace the expansion valve. I have one on its way. So, let me get that going. I have my recovery machine hooked up. Let me just show you. It's, uh, it's kind of antiquated. It's uh, not the best in the world, but it works. I mean, it'll recover. This way I don't have to waste money on using up a lot of Freon. So, set that to zero. Turn recover on. And then open up my valves. And such. And you can actually see the Freon going through and getting recovered. So now the scale does work. It'll start to read in a little while. At least this way I can see how much Freon is in there. It's pretty, the scale's pretty close, so we're gonna see. Right, I'm gonna work on taking this towel off and wipers off and stuff. And there you can see it's reading as it's drawing the system down. So I'm just going to let that keep going and see what happens. All right, so I got the cowl out, which is relatively simple. It's just a two wiper arms. They came right off. It's just two 14 millimeter nuts that hold them in place. They just came right off. And then the cowl itself uses push pins. One here, one over in a corner. Same thing over here on this side. And then basically just lift it up like this and pull it out because it tucks under the windshield. You know, like a channel like this. It goes around the windshield. Uh, so let's see. I gotta take this upper support out. I gotta take the wiper motor out. Uh, looks like there's a couple of 14s there to go to the strut uh, tower, and then there's a bunch of 10s. So let me get all of that out, and it should just come right out. It should be relatively simple, I'm thinking. I have the bolts out, I have the related nuts out. So this thing should lift up and out. There's one bolt in there. It's it's loose. I just I can't get my fingers in there, and I don't have a magnet handy at the moment. So let me get this thing up, and then I'll lay this thing down and use a magnet a little bit later and dig that out. But that should come right out. Let's see. Yep, just like that. Okay. So that was easy enough. So now let me lay that down there. I believe I have to take this shield out here, which I don't think is a big deal. It's a couple of tens, so let me get those out. Okay, I got all those bolts out, so this just comes up and out. So now I can see where the lines go down there. And I gotta take that 10 out. That'll come out, and then the expansion valve is right behind it. So let me get down there, let me get that little 10 out. But you know what? It might be easier to take this power steering hose. I think this is a power steering hose. Oh no, it's a, it's a vacuum hose. Let me take this vacuum hose out of the way. So this way it's not bothering me. This way I have a little bit more room. So or really it's just two squeeze clamps. One here, one there. So let me get that out of the way. So with this hose out of the way, it should make life pretty simple. 
gives me pretty good access to down here. And I should be able to get on that 10 relatively simply. Take the 10 out, and judging by what I see here, that side, the, the high pressure side, is notched. So I got a funny feeling it's like a gate. I'll flip it up, then the lines will come out. So let me do that. Let me get that undone. Like I said, with that bolt out, now you see this whole thing moves. So now I should be able to work this out. Just like that. I put the system into a vacuum. I always do that. So that's why you heard that pop. That was just a vacuum getting sucked in. So a lot of times, a lot of people don't realize this. When you suck down an AC system or you recover an AC system, even if you just, eh, let's say you opened it up and you let all the Freon out, you can let that thing sit for 10 minutes or something and all of a sudden you'll get like the uh, expansion valve or whatever will release and you'll get another burst of Freon coming out. So that's the reason I put it into a vacuum because I want to make sure that final burst of Freon is out of there. So now, inside, I'm sorry, inside this hole here and this hole here, there should be Torx headed screws holding that valve in place. So now, let me just get those down out of the way. So now I gotta get those two Torxes out. Once I get those two Torxes out, I'm gonna take that 10 millimeter and I'm gonna thread it back into there. And then I'm going to take that expansion valve, like use a 10 millimeter of bolt, and use it like a um, like a puller almost. At least this way I have something to grab onto, and then this way I can pull this piece out. I'm going to use these stubby half cut Torx uh, bits that I have. I love these things. I bought these things a number of years ago, and I tell you what, they work absolutely fantastic. And if you, in case you're wondering what this is, this is just a Phillips bit that I keep in there because I use it on my quarter drive gun a lot of times, or quarter drive uh, electric ratchet. But yeah, these things, I tell you, they come in so handy, and they're so perfect. And actually, the cut, like, they're very strong. I've yet to break one or wear one out, and I've used these things all the time. I'm very impressed with the quality of these things. I tell you what, well, well, well worth the price. So, something to consider. All right, let me get that block out of there now, and see what happens. Oh, let me show you the new one, just so you know what it actually looks like. Uh, where is it? It's right here. So that's all, that's all it is. That's all it looks like. Nothing super special. So let me get the old one out. Okay, I got both bolts out. And one of them was a disaster. One of them wouldn't break free. You see how corroded it is right there going through the tube? I wound up, I, I wound up rounding out the head of the bolt with the socket. So I, wound up, I was able to get an easy out in there, and that wasn't easy either. Eh, get it? Easy? Easy out? But that wasn't easy either because I wound up having to push this thing in and then I wound up having to go with a pry bar off of this bracket here to hold tension on this assembly while I turned it with a ratchet and I eventually got it to catch and I mean it took quite a bit of effort to break this thing free. I actually thought at one point I was going to break the, uh, the evaporator in there. So, but anyway, so that's out. And I think we have another junk Ultima outside, so now I'm going to do is just wiggle this and hopefully this should come right out eventually. Come on, baby. It's actually the rubber boot, it's hard to see it. Oops, hold on. The rubber boot down there is actually hanging up like it's adhered to the H-valve. See that? So let me do this two-handed because I'm going to have to get something in there to try to separate the boot from the um, expansion valve. And there it goes. I finally got it out. And if you look, you can actually see some of that rubber boot that went around it was actually like glued itself to here. So I got it out. And the high side port doesn't look bad. There is debris in there. You can actually see it on the tube in there running across. There's some debris on it. So I would absolutely guarantee you that this valve is hanging up. And also, it's awfully dark on the inside there. It really shouldn't be like that. But all right, and actually there's that hole that was giving me the fits. We have an Altima outside, I believe, and I believe the motor is out of it. 
So I should be able to access that setup relatively easy to get another bolt. Because um, I'm probably not going to be able to put that one in and tighten it at all. I don't have a uh, an easy in, so to speak. Because there's no way for me to tighten that thing, really. And that, it, that it's rounded out. So let me just clean up what I got to do. I got to get in there and I got to change those O-rings. Because inside there, once I fold this booty down in place inside there, the evaporator is on the inside there and I have to be able to get to it. You can't even see it. I'd have to get to it to get the O-rings on it. So let me get all that done and see how that goes. So if you look closely down there, you can actually see part of the evaporator. Um, and actually that's the high side. You see I got the O-ring on it. Uh, a little difficult getting those, whoops, those O-rings off and getting those on down there. But I got them both on, so now I can put the block in. Uh, the expansion valve is also known as an H block on certain vehicles. So let me get the new one in place. So I went out in the field and I did find the Ultima that we pulled the motor out of, and I found these. So I was able to pull these out, so I can use these as a replacement. This bottom one's a little hammered, but it's not terrible. So I'm get get these in place and get this thing bolted up. I got the H block in and I got the lines on, so that's all good. So now I just I laid the uh, that booster hose in place and I just got to catch the clamps and I got to assemble everything else. It was a little bit of a pain to catch that uh, H um, expansion valve in place, getting it lined up and everything else, and then catching the bolts. And obviously you got to do it with your fingers to start the bolts because you want to make sure you're not cross threading anything. You cross thread it, and you're going to put an evaporator in. So that's all in and bolted up, new O-rings and everything else, so that should be all good. So let me catch these clamps where they're supposed to be and then start assembling the cowl and everything else. Um, actually what I'll probably do is once I get the hose in place, uh, after I'm done with that, I've got to move the car a little bit. Once I do that, then I'm going to probably start evacuating or putting the system into a vacuum. And uh, this way I can charge it, but it could be in a vacuum while I'm putting the cowl and everything together. Alright, so there we go. It's charged up. And the pressures are pretty normal. The high side's a little on the lower side today because it's a lot cooler this morning than it was yesterday when I was in the afternoon when I was checking. It was like 90 something yesterday, and right now it's like 70. So those pressures are relatively normal for what it should be. And inside, the temperature is right hovering right around 42. So I'm fine with that. That's absolutely golden. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure once I get on the road it's probably going to drop down back to like high 30s like it was yesterday so i'm confident that was the problem what a expansion valve does is it takes the liquid freon basically and it regulates it down and it slows it down and as it slows it down it goes through like an orifice a passageway and it goes from a liquid to a gas as it passes that now it's regulated as you saw in that uh, video where I showed you the inside of it, there's a spring in there. So that kind of regulates it. If that thing gets stuck, then the pressures could go either way low or way high. Way low more than likely not. Way high, yeah. Uh, way low would only be usually if the spring breaks. So, yeah. So I'm pretty confident this is going to fix the problem. There's, there's really nothing else in the system that could cause this. If I was getting consistent high side pressure, consistent high side pressure, then I would say it's probably a clog condenser. I have seen that before. Um, yeah, and a lot of times too, you'll get a high high pressure reading and a low low pressure reading. So but right now the readings are fine. It's cold inside. I'm gonna take it for a ride, make sure everything's good. Because usually you could drive it for 20 minutes or something and then it would fail. So I don't know if you heard that the fan actually just shut off. The pressure's still running, but the fan just shut off. So it's golden. It's working the way it's supposed to be. So let me take this thing for a quick ride and see what happens. I haven't even left the shop yet, and look at the windows. So they're all fogging up already because it's humid, but it's not. It's cool out. It's not hot. And as you can see, the temperature is cold. So all right, let's go for a road test and see what happens. Not sure how well you could see that. That's actually right around 36 to 38 degrees. And now I'm just at a stop. So that's pretty darn cold. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm confident that fixed it. There's, like I said, there's nothing else in the system that could all of a sudden make the pressure, high side pressure, just go out of whack up high. And you know what? I didn't even 
pay attention to it, but I'm pretty sure the low side probably went down into a suction real quick, I just, and I just never thought about it, because that's what'll happen. One side'll go very, very high, and the other side'll go into a suction for a moment. So I got a funny feeling that's what was going on. But anyway, so I'm confident that fixed it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you could, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, that's it for now. You guys have a great day. Keep wrenching.